There are many different types of commercially manufactured security driver pins. Each one of these pins has their own characteristic feedback and must be manipulated in a specific fashion in order to be successfully picked. These pins have an additional security feature. They are specifically designed to interact with and bind to the plug of the lock. This is done by a process called countermilling. Countermilling is the enlargement of the pin chamber below the shear line so that it matches the shape of the driver pin. In this case, the peripheral edge of the barrel driver. In these plugs, there are three areas of countermilling leading to a sawtooth or serrated appearance. The first two each match the peripheral edge of the barrel driver. The third is a widening of the pin chamber directly below the shear line, commonly referred to as an overmill. In this video, we will learn about the two phases necessary to pick the barrel driver with its matching serrated countermilling. But first, a bit of history. The modern pin tumbler lock is credited to Linus Yale Jr. and his original 1865 patent. A little known but fascinating fact is that in this patent, Yale describes the first pin chamber modification to thwart lock picking. His patent describes threaded key pins and driver pins with matching threaded pin chambers. Yale Jr. writes, the holes for the reception of both parts of the tumblers have a screw thread tapped in them or are cut full of notches, and both parts of the tumblers are notched perpendicular to their length. The pin threading is clearly diagrammed in the patent, but the plug modifications unfortunately are not. The next major patent to discuss plug modification was for the gin spool driver with matching countermilling in 1896 by Benjamin Moser for the Russell and Irwin Manufacturing Company. The gin driver design was used by many lock makers and was adopted by ASA in its earlier versions of high security locks. We have previously examined the gin spool driver in video 21 titled The Theory of Picking Gin Spool Drivers. The barrel driver with matching countermilling is a unique design developed by ASA in the mid to late 90s which replaced the gin driver with countermilling. Despite extensive research, I have been unable to locate a patent for this design. Before we proceed, I want to express my deep gratitude and appreciation to Dementia, who expertly constructed both cutaways that are featured in this video. The first cutaway gives us a partial anterior view of the first pin chamber, so that we may study how a single barrel driver interacts with its complementary serrated countermilling. The second cutaway is the more common lateral cutaway used to analyze how multiple pins interact together. So how do you pick the barrel driver? Let's take a closer look. There are two distinct phases of picking the barrel driver. Phase one is setting all of the barrel drivers into the countermilling. Phase two is manipulating each barrel driver from the countermilling to the shear line. Let us begin by examining phase one. In order to understand how to set all the barrel drivers into the countermilling, we must first analyze and understand where these driver pins are in their resting positions. There are nine key pin heights that are matched to four driver heights. Here they are displayed in their resting position. If we install these key pins with their corresponding drivers into our anterior cutaway and apply tension to the plug, we can see how the drivers interact with the plug by examining their initial position relative to the countermilling. This can be summed up by looking at the first four key pins. Key pin one is the longest key pin. Its driver will start in the third section of the countermilling. Key pin 2 has its driver start in the second section of the countermilling. And key pin 3 has its driver start in the first section of the countermilling. Key pin 4 and every shorter key pin have their driver start below the countermilling. In this first phase of picking, the driver pins that start below the countermilling 
associated with key pins 4 through 9 have a unique and somewhat unexpected property. They behave like tapered pins. The shorter the key pin is, and the more short key pins present in a given lock, the more pronounced this effect is. I have previously covered the theory of picking tapered drivers in my video number 23. The basic concept is, as you nudge up a tapered driver, the diameter of that driver is reduced at the shear line, causing it to fall and allowing another driver to bind. This requires multiple back and forth nudges to get the drivers to the shear line. Although the barrel driver is not tapered, as the central section is the same diameter as the peripheral section, it acts and needs to be picked as if it were tapered. There are several possible hypotheses to this behavior, though this is out of the scope of this presentation. There are three tips to follow when picking the barrel drivers into the counter milling. Of note, these are identical to the tips of picking taper drivers. They are, number one, use heavy tension. Two, keep gently nudging each key pin in small increments. The feedback for a binding pin may be very subtle and sometimes seemingly non-existent. And finally, number three, watch out for oversetting pins. It is possible to overset the key pin in this phase of picking so that the key pin crosses the shear line. This is in stark contrast to phase two of picking the barrel driver, in which it is near impossible for this to occur. Let us now examine these tips in action as we pick through phase one on our lateral cutaway. This asset twin exclusive has been populated with five identical short key pins and their associated barrel drivers, which will be labeled two through six. This is the shear line, and this is the resting position of the drivers, which in this example are all on the same line because the key pins are the same height. This blue line is the position of the first counter milling. You may notice that it is not in line with the counter milling highlighted in red in the first pin chamber. This is because the plug is rotated. As heavy tension is applied, all the pins are gently bounced and nudged in small increments. The goal is to try and find a binder and give it a small nudge. Sometimes all the pins feel springy and there is no binder. In this case, increase tension and just keep bouncing and tapping away. Pin two is bounced and although it is springy and not stiff or binding, you can see that it has been nudged up to a higher position in the chamber. Pin three is springy as well with no binding feedback, but as it is nudged, it settles in a higher position as pin two falls into a slightly lower position. Although nothing is binding, the barrels are ever so slightly moving up the chamber. Pin four is springy, five is springy. Pin six has minimal binding, and as it is nudged up, it loses the stiffness. Once a pin transitions like this and becomes loose, you can test it by bouncing your pick on it, but if it is indeed loose and springy, you don't want to lift it any higher, or you risk an overset. Five is now springy, four is springy. Three has minimal stiffness and is nudged until it becomes springy. Two exhibits this minimal binding as well, and is nudged until it is springy. Three is springy, four is springy, five is springy, six is now heavily binding, and a click is heard as it becomes springy. This auditory feedback likely signifies that it has been set in the first counter milling. Five is springy, four now is binding, and clicks into the counter milling and becomes springy. 3 now is binding and clicks into the counter milling. 2 heavily binds and clicks into the first counter milling to become springy as well. 6 is springy. 5 is heavily binding and clicks loudly as it sets into the first counter milling. Once all the barrels are in the counter milling, the plug will have a distinctive feel in which the barrels will begin heavily binding you will start to get very pronounced clicks when nudging the drivers from one section of counter milling to the next. This change in feedback indicates that the lock is now in phase two. This is where we will pick up in the next video. I hope that you've enjoyed the video so far. If you have, please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.